Step 2. Routing algorithms and protocols. This step is going to be dedicated to how we route in a quantum network, and we're going to highlight this distinction between a routing algorithm and what's a routing protocol. The nodes in the network are always trying to find the information about the topology of the network, state of the network, uh, about the various conditions of the links. They do this in a distributed fashion. And sometimes they may gather information which differs from its neighbors or other nodes in the network. Regardless of how much information they have, we must ensure that the consistent decisions are made in order to allow the network to operate properly. Let's talk about what's a routing algorithm. A routing algorithm is basically a solution to a graph theory problem. And we're going to talk about three different categories of routing algorithms. The first one is a centralized one. This is where we have one node that knows everything about the network and all the decisions are made by that one single node. It makes the decisions and then distributes corresponding um, instructions to the nodes of the network. A different approach to routing is through global knowledge algorithms. This is where every node in the network learns, complete, uh, learns the complete network, but it decides locally. And a different approach to routing is through distributed or decentralized knowledge algorithms. Here the nodes make decisions locally, as in the global knowledge case, but they don't learn the full knowledge of the network. Each node has some partial information. On the other hand, a routing protocol tells us about the syntax and the semantics of messages sent to build all or some knowledge about the network, including adapting to changes in the network and considering security concerns. Let's begin with centralized routing algorithms. We have our, node of, our network of seven nodes, and this is our centralized network controller. Let's say that A and B are trying to establish an entangled connection. Then the network controller computes, OK, please use path A to F, F to G, G to B. It creates instructions for the relevant nodes of the network, when to entanglement swap, how to purify. And then they can establish the connection between A and B. Similarly, if D and E are trying to establish end-to-end -end entangled connection, the network controller computes, the best choice is this one, D, F, C, E, distributes the corresponding instructions to these nodes, and then they can um, achieve the task of establishing end-to-end -end entanglement between D and E. Such an approach is suitable for single, small networks for wavelength assignment, fast forwarding path in backbone, or high performance local area networks, and system area networks. But you can see, because everything is centralized, the scalability is very limited. And often, it's coupled with resource management and multiplexing, because all the knowledge about network is um, contained in a single network controller, which makes decisions how to deal with errors and multiplexing. But still, we have not answered the question. How does the network controller gain all the information about the network? This question must be solved be before uh, designing any quantum network. Let's move on to the second uh, type of routing algorithms, and that's global routing algorithms. We said that here each node knows everything about the network, but makes uh, um, decisions independently locally. The knowledge of the entire network that's trying to be built by all the nodes of the network is known as the link state. Here we have uh, the spanning tree built by uh, node A. And such a tree is built by messages, uh, for example, as follows. A tells C, I'm connected to C, D, and F. So it tells to C uh, who can be reached from A. It also receives similar message from D. So D is telling A, I'm connected to B and A. A takes this message from D, and also forwards it to C. And this way, by sharing all the information about who is connected to whom, uh, the entire network topology is known by all the nodes. This is the spanning tree for the node A. 
but it doesn't mean that all the nodes have the same spanning tree and the same routing table. For example, C might have the following uh, spanning tree and the following routing table. One of the most famous algorithms when it comes to routing is uh, a global routing algorithm. It's called the Dijkstra's algorithm and it was introduced in 1959 and it calculates the path cost as sum of link costs. Protocols based on this algorithm are central to operation of most of the networks on the internet. Uh, very, very uh, famous protocols, routing protocols that use the Dijkstra's algorithm are OSPF or Open Shortest Path First or ISIS, Intermediate System, Intermediate System. Scalability of these protocols is reasonable, but it's not unlimited. Similarly, their convergence is not that fast. Convergence in this sense means that if some dynamical change occurs in the network, how long does it take for this information about the change to propagate to all the networks such that they can make um, up-to-date decisions? Now let's think about the last class of routing algorithms, that's the distributed knowledge ones. Here the nodes are trying to build what's known as the distance vector. It's something similar to a global uh, a global link state, but now the nodes don't have full knowledge of the entire network, but only a partial knowledge. For example, A tells C, I can reach D and B. So C knows that the best path to D and B is via the node A. So whenever it wants to send, uh, establish a connection with B, it knows it needs to contact A first. Or similarly, the best path to uh, the network uh, at G is via F. So it builds its corresponding uh, routing table based on this information. The data required at the, each node is now much more limited and also the messages exchanged between the nodes are generally smaller. But the convergence is uh, worse when compared to global, net, global routing algorithms and therefore so is also the scalability. Also, there is a difference between physical topology and the entangled states, which is very relevant to routing. What do we mean by that? Well, some researchers propose routing on per state basis. That means at any instant, a God's eye view shows entanglement topology different from physical topology. For example, here, uh, this is the connection between A and B. So we might think that the natural way to establish such an end-to-end -end entangled connection is to establish link-level entanglement between A and F, F and G, G and B, and then perform entanglement swapping accordingly. But what if at an instant in time we've got the following entanglement map? A has just established uh, entanglement to C, C to F, and so on. So we don't have entanglement along the designated path, yet there still um, exists an entangled path between A and B. So fact number one, what we just discussed, such a scenario occurs when the success of links to establish entanglement is very low. Fact number two, also the memory lifetimes are short compared to link and path round trip times. So the question is, how can we choose entanglement swapping points dynamically to improve latency and fidelity between end-to-end -end, uh, connection? Challenges that um, we must face when we're talking about the physical topology versus entangled uh, states is the propagation delays. The nodes may not know who has entanglement, and this presents uh, quite a serious problem. If we want to somehow change the entanglement path, we must know who is entangled to whom at every instant uh, in time. Internode cooperation might be difficult. Who needs to cooperate with whom? Who is swapping with whom? All this information must be included. In the last lesson, we presented one way of dealing with this problem, and that's through rule sets. Also, multipath traffic sources and multiplexing. It's not very clear how to combine these two with the idea of establishing rule sets. 
uh, knowing the state of the network and who is entangled with whom at all times is very challenging in terms of the overhead of messaging. Messages must be constantly, um, constantly exchanged, not only locally, but between all the nodes of the network. This presents a huge challenge when we think about scalability. So routing is a good research topic, but because of this challenging, it's very hard to execute. Theoretically, rule sets that we presented in the last lesson um, could be used to do that, but they will definitely require some new connection setup mechanisms. Therefore, for now, we're going to stick to a simple uh, choosing a single path between two connections for long-term connections. A different approach to routing is what's known as multipath routing, or channel bonding or inverse multiplexing. Here, we are showing three different edge distinct paths between A and B. We have the usual one, A, F, G, B, but then we have two more. One leads through node D, and the other one leads through nodes C and E. Being able to use entanglement established at these lengths might boost the overall bandwidth between A and B, as well as fault tolerance or fidelity. But we must think about what is the disparity in performance among the different paths and how that affects our management and what's the overall gain. For example, using the path A, D to B might be very fast. So then we might say, well, let's use A, F, G, B as well. But that path might be very slow. The, the generation rate might be very slow compared to A, D, B. So the question is the gain that we get, is it high enough to warrant having to deal with the management of such a complex system or not? Also, if we reserve all of these different paths to a single connection, we are depriving other connections of access to these resources. For example, C and E might wish to engage in uh, entanglement with QKD, but they cannot because that path, their link, is being used in the connection for, for A and B. Again, theoretically, we can do all of these things inside rule sets, but definitely they will require some new connection setup mechanisms. These are all the various basics of routing algorithms and protocols in quantum networks.